Jostal. He writes, uh, he's a staff writer for the Washington Free Beacon. And I do want to talk about uh, the topic that we're talking about, but he has a few other stories that I found kind of intriguing, actually. T- uh, nice work, Joe. Good morning. Good morning. How are you, Raj? All right. So explain to us, uh, let's let's talk about the money first. Uh, headline from the Washington Free Beacon. You can get them at freebeacon.com. Hillary pulls in contributions from twice as many lobbyists as the nearest candidate. So uh, you can sell yourself as an outsider gain an outsider. Well, typically everybody knows by now that Hillary Clinton is anything but an outsider. She spent most of her life for the past 20-something years in D.C. with her husband as president, including that. When it comes to the lobbyist contribution, this is significant because, for one, I will say that the lobbyists are holding their pocketbooks compared to like normal. Barack Obama did have the ban in place. But there were ways around to beat the ban. Some lobbyists, like family members of lobbyists, who donate money. But this year, Hillary Clinton sort of lifted the ban quietly, and many Democrats are not happy about that. She's accepted $625,000 so far from 316 lobbyists. And the person right behind her is George or uh, Jeb Bush, excuse me, with $400,000 from 140 lobbyists. So basically what you're seeing is you're seeing lobbyists who they're banking on establishment candidates who they think may have the best chance of winning the White House. But the way things are shaping up now, it doesn't look like either of those candidates are too strong. So. Well, yeah, it seems to be. And, and you know, uh, did you get uh, had was it in your mind at that time to look into Joe Biden? How's he doing? Joe Biden, him, so, well, obviously he hasn't made an announcement yet. So when it comes to lobbyist contributions, there is none. We don't there. know, yeah. Yeah, we don't know yet. By the way, I was looking at some of your other work. <laughs> I've got to tell you. Here's a cherry one. 141 U.S. counties have more registered voters than people. <laughs> yes. Yes. That, yeah, I just wrote that yesterday. That basically, it was an election law group called the, um, um, the Legal Interest Foundation. They're based out of Indiana. They basically took um, federal data of registered voters and people living in the state and matched it up, and they found 141 counties across the United States in 21 states that had more registered voters than people alive within those counties. So their voter rolls are, in some circumstances, like in Illinois, they had two counties. Franklin County was the highest with 190% voter registration rate. Like, that is absurd. And then another county in Illinois also had 176% voter registration rate. How does this happen? I mean, is this intentional or is this just the fact that, you know, somebody's too lazy to go through the, the voting rolls? It could be it could be a combination of both. That's what that's why they're doing this. It could be out, people moving out of state. It could be it could be um, dead people still on rolls, which we've heard about a lot of times in the past. Them not purging the rolls, but it's not outside of the realm of possibility that some counties may try to do something a little bit to skirt things, well, but that's, that's why they're threatening the lawsuits. Well, Joe, I remember a story. I think it was the 2008 election. I think it was. Uh, in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, There, once again, there were more votes cast than there were people living in the county. Yeah, that's it's, it's pretty insane. Like, even um, some areas in Cleveland outside in 2012, I believe it was, they had 100% voter turnout, and... <laughs> sure Any county do. in America, 100% voter turnout is basically impossible. Yes. You know, nationally, absolutely. Yeah, nationally, it's probably about 48, 49%. So, like, one county, you know, 100%. That means every registered voter went to vote. And that's, that's, it's, that never, I don't think that's ever happened in a county before. You know, in a couple, you're very prolific. I'm looking at another story that intrigues me the Department of Homeland Security, 20 million on conferences last fiscal year. Yes. So basically, that, that is what they only know of the money. Like, that's basically what they've turned over. They've only turned over 13% of all conference spending. So basically, they don't, they just have a lump sum of how much money they spend. They don't say, like, they don't line item it saying, oh, we spent this much on $20,000 on, like, a banquet or a dinner or 20, over 23 of those um, conferences cost over $100,000. I'll bet they were darn good. I'll bet they were nice ones. Yeah, like, can you imagine a $100,000 conference? Like, what would be involved with that? That's cool. <laughs> <laughs> you know, seriously, guys, like, uh, just go to freebeacon.com. Uh, Joe writes a lot of stuff. Uh, for example, uh, Huma Abedin received over 40000 from Hillary's former, uh, I guess, one of her uh, employees or uh, employers. Uh, Valerie Jarrett saved 200000 on uh, real estate using tax breaks. Uh, it's good stuff, Joe. I want to thank you. I hope to have you on again. Thank you. Appreciate it, Red. All right. That's Joe Shostall. He's with the Washington Free Beacon, just freebeacon.com. A lot of, this guy must be writing like seven stories a day. Amazing. Yeah.